There are athletes in every single gym that you've never heard of that are some of the most skilled fighters in the entire world. Any big gym that I've ever trained at, there's always a couple fighters that are the absolute boogeyman, like nobody wants a piece of them during practice. But when you look at their record and their accomplishments, they haven't really done that much. And sometimes that's a case of they took the wrong fights at the wrong time. Sometimes that's a case of they just don't perform as well on the big stage. And so you look at you know the fighters who are renowned, and in some cases their skill level may not be equivalent with their reputation, but you know, once again, because it's such a limited sample in MMA, it changes a lot of the perception of each fighter in their career. It being kind of do or die time, just stressful beyond any normal fight camp. The shot of all shots, you know, for, for me at least, I know I was only 25 when the fight happened, but you don't get too many shots like that. So uh, I think I knew it was at stake and uh, it just made for a, a grueling, terrible fight camp. So you look at the minutes that go into your actual fights as a fighter. If you fought 15 fights over a career, so let's say you fought three times a year for five years as a professional. It's 15 fights. That's four hours of time spent in the cage if every fight went the distance. And the sum total of your legacy, of your accomplishments in your career come down to those four hours. And you think about these fighters are spending four hours a day training, but that four years adds up to the sum total of their career. So the stakes are incredibly high and you might only get to fight one to two times a year depending on scheduling and so the amount that each fight matters and the amount that each fight can sway the balance of your career whether a split decision goes your way or not can give you a huge opportunity or take one off the table and so the stakes are incredibly high. Well, weeks ahead of time it was my fight to win you know uh, or, or my fight to lose. It was, it was up to me to make a mistake, was to let him in the fight, you know? And I. Tables and chairs, one by all of the dimes. This is a place where I don't feel alone. This is a place where I feel. Um, and I started hitting him. I think I, you know, he gave me an inch and I took a football field's worth of yards, you know. Uh. Sitting next to me, and I'm holding Steve's arm, and I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God, he's sleeping. Steve, he's asleep. Steve, he's asleep. It's done. It's over. We did it. And I started freaking out, and then I realized what was happening. I'm like, oh my gosh. I was in Las Vegas, in the Performance Institute training. I was there all week long because my buddy Ryan wanted to go out there and train and he asked me if I wanted to go at the same time. I was like, yeah, let's do this. I was there for, for a week and Wednesday, I think it was, I was finishing up my training, so I was in the hot tub and I got an email from USADA saying I had been dropped from the testing pool. And you didn't get too good of reception there, so I tried to call out to my manager to see what the heck was going on. So I, I couldn't call out because of the bad reception, so I texted him right away. I was like, what is going on? Am I cut right now? Kind of... Yeah, aggressively. Yeah, I was very upset. And then um, he was like, yeah, we, we just got the call about it, unfortunately. 
And dude, I was, I think I was in there at the time by myself in the, in the room that has the jacuzzi in it. And man, I wanted to cry, I didn't cry, but I mean, it was just like all the air in your lungs was just let go. I mean, I had worked so hard for this and we thought we were pretty safe. I, after the last loss, I was like, Lou, or to my manager, I was like, we're, we're pretty safe, right? We shouldn't be worried. And he was like, no, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine, no worries. And especially with the night win, we figured that we were pretty safe. And so getting that call is just like, wow, what, what have I, uh, what could I have done differently? Why is this happening? X, Y, Z. And, and, you know, at that time I was, I was upset, but at the same time, I, I have that faith to, to rely on and that this isn't everything. I ended up taking a fight on fairly short notice and I hadn't fought in about a year and a half and I had begun picking my training back up but I still wasn't you know, quite there where I wanted to be, but I thought I could get like a short notice fight, get a win, and then kind of take that one and start rolling. Um, and I ended up losing a decision, probably the worst loss of my career in terms of my performance and in terms of the process that got me there. And I think you know, it was pretty eye-opening for me and it took a while for a lot of the lessons to sink in. Um, I feel like for me, it was that moment of there was a decision I had to make and I wanted to fight. I wanted to see what my potential was. The entire reason I got into fighting was to find out where the ends of my potential were, to test myself. And I didn't feel like I was able to do that in that fight because I didn't train the way I needed to. I couldn't invest in myself the way I needed to. I couldn't be selfish the way I needed to going into it. And fighting is a very selfish endeavor. Like you have to know what needs to be done and you have to make that sacrifice years in advance before the moment where you want to receive your desired outcome. And that wasn't happening, you know, from opening the academy, at first when I opened the academy, you know, it was great. I had a place to train all the time. I could bring in coaches, like life was good. And over time, all these fighters kept showing up and I started really caring about them. And I started caring about my students and it was harder and harder to take time away that I could give to them and spend it on myself. And at the same time, my daughter was growing up and it just turned into, you know, I was coming in, you know, third or fourth place on my own list of priorities. And so basically, you know, there, it just wasn't getting done. Like the necessary work wasn't getting done. And objectively, I could step back and just tell myself that honestly, I wasn't preparing the way I needed to, to have the results I wanted. And that it wasn't setting the example for my students to prepare to get what they wanted. And so I think at a certain point I had to be honest with myself about what my options were going to be going forward and that if my life opened up in a way that gave me the opportunity to dedicate that time that I could consider fighting again. But until I was both willing and able to make the sacrifices necessary, it didn't make sense to go out and put on subpar performances because that has nothing to do with you know achieving my potential like just going out and fighting to fight has nothing to do with finding out how good you can truly be phone call when i was in jordan i was uh, getting ready to corner my teammate abdul kareem and uh i get the phone call in jordan my my coach is like hey we're going to be on the contender series you know um and i was already training at the time even overseas you know i just i just try to find time to train all the time so I get the phone call that I'm going to be on the Contender Series. We're going through the whole camp. Everything is just firing on all cylinders. You know, it was, I can honestly say, you know, not to sound too cliche or anything like that, but this this probably was the best camp that I've ever had in my whole career. And um, we're getting the medicals done, everything like that. And it's it's funny how the last thing that I did. Uh, I had to get done was the MRIs for some reason. So sure enough, you know, I get an email back from the UFC medical team 
And uh, they alert me there that there's an irregular finding in my MRI and I need to see a neurologist. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of nervous a little bit because it's getting close to about two weeks. It's a fight time. And, uh, you know, the only thing that's running through my head is like, am I going to fight? You know, like, what's going on? So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to relax, calm down, and uh, let, every play, let everything play its course. So I go to the neurologist's office. He says, hey, you know, this looks like a cyst in your orbital, but uh, I'm going to need to confirm it with a neurosurgeon, you know, and get a CT scan done as well. So upon doing the CT scan, everything like that, I go to the neurosurgeon's office, and, you know, he informs me that, hey, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a cyst. It's, in fact, it's a tumor in my orbital. And uh, right then and there, he said that he wouldn't be able to clear me, and no athletic commission uh, would be able to clear me. And, um, you know, it was really, really hard to process. At the time, you know, it was just a flow of emotions going through me. And, um, you know, I felt like uh, I had something taken away from me that I worked so hard for, you know. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just one of those guys that's always going to continue to push forward and uh, continue to create my own path. I was retired. I didn't want to fight, really, but some things in life had come up and you know the financial part of the fight really was gonna help so I took the fight and everything fell perfectly for the fight um, everything I wanted I got and I weighed in right on the money um, at what I was allowed to weigh uh, right after weigh-ins so we had our private weigh-in at five o'clock the official weigh-in at five o'clock and then we had to wait around in the same room. We didn't get to leave. Um, and then we had to do the public weigh-in at six. In the middle of all of that, I was rehydrating. I was having fun at weigh-ins. Uh, we got back to the hotel room and I started feeling a little different. Um, we tried to get an IV in me and uh, we had two shots and we blew, we blew a vein with both shots. Uh, and in between them, I was, I was laying on my bed and I looked at my wife and I told her something's wrong. Um, after that second vein blew, my corner man and my wife, they got me up and got me to the hospital really quick, but there was a huge weight. Um, my kidneys had started shutting down at that point and I was in so much pain. Um, I remember at one point, I was puking in the emergency room, waiting room bathroom, and I come out and my wife went to check um, with the lady at the desk to see how long it was going to be because they all knew I just need I need an IV and I don't need a room you can bring it out here set it on me whatever but I remember while she was away I looked up at my my Muay Thai coach and I told him I think I'm dying 